So my name is Adrian Casio, and I'm the program coordinator for Career Ready Tempe. And I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I also want to thank our amazing partners uh, at Tempe Union High School District, Tempe Chamber of Commerce, and City of Tempe, because honestly, this would not be possible without their partnership. So today we're going to be talking about making a resume because before you know it, uh, school will be out and summer will be in. Uh, and for some of us, that means looking for a job, maybe an internship, possibly volunteer opportunity, maybe speaking to college reps. Uh, and even if it's none of the above, having a resume is something good to have in the near future as you start doing any of those things. So we have uh, the pleasure of having Elise Lang, who is with ASU's, ASU's Career and Professional Development Services. She is going to be presenting on essential tips for making a stellar resume. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully we can have a little time to watch that video that Adrian was talking about. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to talk mainly about how to create a resume. Um, and then towards the end of this presentation, I'm gonna touch a little bit on cover letters just because it's good to know um, in any event that you might need to make a cover letter. So kind of an overview of what we're gonna talk about today. So first couple things we'll go over before we get into the resumes um, is the importance of identifying a goal when you're searching for a job um, or an internship. And then we'll talk a little bit about career competencies and what we mean by that. And then we'll get into those resumes, cover letters, and then last, I'll talk a little bit about references. So for that goal, when you're applying for a job or for an internship, um, it's really helpful to start with a goal in your mind. And that can be really simple. It can literally just be, I would like to get a part-time job, or I'd like to get this internship. Um, for some people, it might be more complicated of, I want to apply for five different internships in the next month. So whatever is most useful for you, but picking some kind of goal related to what you want to do and making sure you follow through on it. Um, and through that process, if you apply into these different positions, um, something I find really helpful is just looking at job descriptions, reading what their requirements are um, and seeing what are different types of jobs or internships I might be interested in. Really, I think the only way of figuring out what you want to do is doing a little research. So Googling and, and really reading those descriptions in depth and seeing, OK, what uh, would I be doing in this job? Is that something I could see myself liking doing? Um, and then lastly, thinking about your audience. So once you're ready to apply for that position, um, thinking about the company or the organization you're applying for and thinking, OK, what would they want to see from me on my application? Um, so really keeping in mind, what did that job description say? So this is just kind of the initial process to keep in mind when you're applying for those jobs. So career competencies. Um, this is kind of a fancy term for something that is more commonly, you can call it just their universal skills. Um, that's really what they are, is a lot of different categories of skills that you might encounter in the workplace. So I won't go over all of these, um, but some that you may have heard of before, things like written and verbal communication, leadership, teamwork and collaboration, professionalism and work ethic. Those are some pretty common ones that we hear about a lot. Um, some other ones that can get a little more complex, problem solving and critical thinking, so being able to show an employer that you're able to think critically about a problem, um, that you're able to solve something and come up with a solution. Um, additionally, digital technology, that can look different for different types of jobs. So just something to keep in mind. Um, other good ones to look at, career management. So that kind of ties back into what we just talked about with that process of applying for a job. So keeping track of your applications and also knowing where do I see myself in the future? What can I do right now to get there? And that's all a part of career management. So it's really just about knowing where you want to get and knowing what you have to do to get there. And then the last one I'll mention is just global and intercultural fluency. Um, again, you might encounter that a little bit more in some jobs than others, but it's definitely something important to keep in mind 
um, of knowing to be respectful if you're encountering people from other cultures, um, different backgrounds. So all of these are definitely different areas that employers will want to see some level of skill in. Again, some more than others, but it all depends. So that's why it's important to read through those job descriptions. Cool, alrighty. So why do I actually need a resume? Um, unfortunately, because simply sending employers this, saying, please hire me, I really just want this job, um, it doesn't work. They're gonna need a little bit of that extra input there to see, okay, what is this person all about? Um, what are they passionate about? Why are they interested in us? So that's kind of the reason resume is necessary is employers don't know who you are. So your resume is one way to show them that, um, to give them a little bit more info. So we will start with just some general overviews of the format. Um, my first resume, I used a template from Google Docs. And I will say, I do not recommend using templates, um, mainly because they can be difficult to edit later. So if you go back in and you want to add or remove things, um, templates can make it difficult to do that sometimes. So it's honestly a lot better to just start with that general blank Word doc and work from there. Um, but you can also check out like, you know, some more basic templates. So things that don't have like crazy graphics or colors. So simpler templates, if you need something to start with, um, can be a good initial option before you feel ready to start with your own Word document. Other things to keep in mind, um, I would stick with black and white font. That's just kind of the typical recommendation. Um, if you're doing for most industries, if you get into a more creative industry, that might change. Um, but if you do ever encounter that, that's when, you know, I'd reach out to some people you know in that industry. Um, or again, do a little Google search, see what you can find online. And then other things to keep in mind too. Um, generally, resumes should be single spaced. Margins should be about half an inch to a full inch around. Either one of those is fine. And then I would pick an easy to read font. So something like Calibri, Arial, Times New Roman, anything like that will work fine. Um, and then with that too, so for font size, your whole resume should be around between 10 and 12 point font size. And then your name, we actually recommend making a little bit bigger and potentially bolding it so it stands out a little bit more. So 14 to 16 is fine. You could go a little bigger than that if you wanted, but as long as it's not like crazy big and taking up too much room on your resume, um, but it still stands out in comparison to everything else, you should be fine. All right, so we're gonna go over a few specific sections on the resume. So the first part of the resume, at the top of the page, you should have your contact info. Um, so this is kind of the header of your resume. Usually you're gonna have your full name, or if you have a nickname, you can put that on there. And then definitely having a phone number and an email on there. If you have a LinkedIn account, um, I don't know how many will, um, but if you do have one, highly recommend putting it on there. Um, it's kind of like professional Facebook if you aren't familiar with LinkedIn, um, but it's a good way to let employers know that you're interested in networking with them, um, communicating and, and making some sort of connection online in a professional manner. And this is just kind of an example of what that could look like. So if you don't have a LinkedIn, another option is just putting your address on there. That's not always necessary, um, but some people do choose to put it. Um, at a minimum, if you're not putting a LinkedIn, you could just put your city and state that you're located in, um, mainly because employers don't really need your physical address. But of course, if they ask you to include it, for sure include it on there. All right. Next Hi, Elise. Section. Yeah. If the, uh, you know, mind, ask, we have a quick question. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, question is uh, bullet points or full sentences? Ooh. Uh, I think that was in regards to a previous section? slide. Yeah, I believe in the experience slide. Okay. I will get to that in one second. Cool. Um, I don't want to answer now, but we'll get there. And like, I think it's literally the this next slide after this one. Sounds good. <laughs> All righty. Um, yeah, so education section, I would say for y'all right now, I would probably list that first just so it's clear to them you're either still in school or you'll be graduating soon. Um, 
Generally, formatting you can follow for that. For high school, generally it's fine to just say what was the high school you attended, when did you graduate, or when are you expecting to graduate by. If you would like to include a GPA, you totally can. It's usually optional, um, but if the employer or the company wants you to include it, um, they should let you know. And then additionally, city and state you're located in. So if you do decide to attend a university or a college and pursue um, a higher level degree than a diploma, um, the format would be a little bit different and that you would want to have your degree you're pursuing then underneath the university or the college, the location, and then same information on the right side. So that's just an example of what you could do there. Um, but for you all right now in high school, this is the formatting that I would stick with. Oh, almost the next slide. So this is just an example of that formatting. So you can see here they didn't include GPA just because it's not always needed on there. All right, so for the experience section, I believe the question was doing bullet points or full sentences. Um, and my response is actually both. So I do recommend using bullet points and we'll go over kind of the number that I recommend per experience. Um, but for bullet points, we have a specific format that we recommend following. It's called accomplishment statements. Um, and they are usually full sentences. And this is kind of the structure to them. So starting with an action verb. So something describing what you were doing, like assisted or helped. Um, and then you would go into the project or the task. And that's really just you explaining what were you doing in this, um, giving a little detail of how you were doing that. And then the last part, and this is the part that's really, it's more of a goal than you have to do this for every single bullet point. Um, but if you're able to, I would add a result in. So showing them some kind of purpose behind what you were doing. And we'll go through a few examples of this. So first, I'll just point out a little of the formatting here. So generally, this is the typical format to follow is you want to have your position first bolded so that it stands out. Then the company name here, they've italicized it. That's not necessary, but you can totally do that. So some formatting things are personal, whatever you think looks nice. Um, location can either be on the same line or if you wanted to have a little bit more space here, because I know some company names can be a little bit long, you can pop this information right down here underneath on the next line. Um, that will make your resume longer. So if that's something you want to do to fill out that full page, um, that's definitely a good formatting option. And then kind of similar to the education section, you do want to have dates in here, but rather than saying, oh, this is what I'm working until, you want to say, here's the starting date, here's the ending date. Or if you're still working there, you could say July 2018 to present um, or current. Either one of those works fine. But for bullet points, generally recommending about three to five per experience. That's a good number of just giving them a little bit of that background info of what do you do here? What skills do you have? Um, and on this next slide, we can see a little bit more description of that. Um, and I wanted to point out too the different parts of the accomplishment statement format here. So if we look in this first bullet point, this is a really good example of one of they have that action verb right there, provide, and then that project. So that's what were you doing? How were you doing it? So provide, what were you doing? High quality customer service to more than 100 guests per day in a fast paced environment while working with other team members. So that's where that like middle portion ends. And then the result of that, and this is like the purpose. Why were you doing that? Why did it matter that you were doing that? Is this last portion here to create an excellent experience and ensure return visits. So that's a good example of what you could do. Um, some other things I'll point out, they quantify right here of how many guests per day they were assisting. If you're able to use numbers, that can look really good on the resume. Um, it just helps employers to have a little bit more of like a visual in their head of instead of saying I helped guests every day, saying I helped 100 guests per day is like, whoa, that's a big number. Or like that helps me kind of visualize how many people you were assisting. Um, but yeah, so that's a bit of a more complicated bullet point. This third one here is a lot shorter. So 
when that question was saying, you know, should we use full sentences? Yes, but they don't have to be very long. So for this one, it's really just utilize resources. Why were you doing it? What was the result of that? to answer customer questions and field customer complaints. So it doesn't have to be overly complicated, um, but it can definitely be longer. Um, cool. All right, hopefully that makes sense. But if anyone has any more questions, let me know, Adrian. All right. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too, if you have any club experience at your high school, Something that can be helpful is having something like a community involvement or an extracurricular section. So the format would be really, really similar to work experience. Uh, you can just say if you had a position, what that was. If you were a member, you can include that. Um, and then the club and, and where you were doing that at. So, for example, this is Neuro Devils, the name of the club at ASU. Um, same thing with like including the dates on the right side. And for community involvement, you can definitely include three to five bullet points, um, but you don't have to. So generally around one to two bullet points is totally fine for anything that's non-work related. So clubs you've been in, volunteer work, um, class projects, those are all fine with just one to two bullet points describing them. Perfect. All right, I'll move on. Um, Something else I wanted to mention. So for career services, um, a lot of our resources are only ASU student specific, but I wanted to mention on our website, um, we have this little section that has a bunch of different types of handouts that are all accessible um, to everyone. So you don't have to be an ASU student to access these. Um, this is the website, so it's career.asu.edu. And the way to get to what this page is, is if you go on the right top tab of that page, there's a career resources tab. If you click on there and then scroll down all the way to the bottom, there will be a section called helpful handouts. And then from there, that's where all of these different handouts show up. So you can see on the right side here, and this is towards the bottom of this page too, um, we have a bunch of different resume samples. So if you are having a hard time not using a template or trying to figure out what format you want to use, these are all different really good examples of slightly different formats for different industries. Um, and there's also some good handouts for more info on accomplishment statements. Um, we also have a document that's called resume action verbs, and that's essentially a long categorized list of different action verbs. So it can be hard sometimes to avoid repeating the same one over and over again. So if you find yourself in that state, um, this document can be really helpful of saying, okay, instead of me saying assisted again, what's another way to say that? Um, so yeah, so these are all really good handouts to use that you can just access through our website. Um, no login needed, free access. So hopefully that is helpful. All right, and then I already touched on this a little bit, um, but there are some additional sections other than work experience um, that you can include on your resume. So a few of these, we already talked a little bit about community involvement, like volunteering um, or student organizations or clubs, but some other ones, um, relevant courses. If you have taken relevant courses either in high school or had the chance to do some relevant courses through community college or university. Those are good things you can include on your resume. Additionally, any part time jobs that you've had, if you have done a course project, so that could be something you did either on your own in a team. Um, and really, it doesn't have to be anything specific other than I would say it's not just a basic homework assignment, something that's probably a little bit more long term, like a paper you wrote or a presentation you gave. Um, those are good ways to show, you know, some a little bit additional experiences to employers. And then finally, um, if you have any technical or computer skills, having a skill section on your resume can be really helpful. So things like Microsoft Office or PowerPoint, those are good general technical skills you can include on your resume. Um, and usually that section would be towards the bottom of your resume, um, unless you're applying for something that's like, oh, we have to have people who are skilled in Microsoft Excel. 
um, then in that case, I would maybe move it a little bit higher, um, but generally towards the bottom of the page is fine for that. Perfect. Alrighty, if anyone has questions about resumes that I didn't cover, make sure to put it in the Q&A. Um, but we'll get a little bit into cover letters now. So, for cover letters, they can be a little bit daunting and that the resume is, is, is definitely a little less personal if you're talking about your experiences, um, but you're not really speaking directly to the employer or to the hiring manager. So probably the most difficult part of a cover letter is knowing you're speaking in a more personal manner. So it's gonna be full paragraphs um, of about one page long is what I'd recommend for a cover letter. Um, but you speaking directly to them and saying, this is who I am. This is why I'm interested in your company and in this position. These are my experiences, um, either ones you mentioned on the resume or things maybe you didn't mention on the resume. So definitely the hardest part that I have found and, and through talking to different students is talking to them in a personal manner without feeling like awkward or like you're not sure how to talk about yourself. So we'll talk about that in a second and maybe some ways to get around those nerves. Um, but I'll talk about some little general formatting first. Um, as we can see, as on the resume, on the cover letter, you're also going to want to have a header on there. Um, and for that, you can simply just copy and paste the same heading from your resume and then follow it with this information. So the date that you're submitting that cover letter on and then a little info about the company. So if you have the company name, their address, um, if you have the hiring manager's name, you can also put that information above the company name. Um, but essentially, whatever information you have about them can go in here. And then right below that, we want to make sure to greet them. So some general good ones to use are Dear Hiring Committee, Dear Hiring Manager. If you have a name, that's always better just because it's a little more personal to them. So if you're able to find a name or call the company to ask for one, um, I definitely recommend doing so. Um, but when in doubt or you can't find someone, something like Dear Hiring Committee works completely fine. Um, and additionally, some other things you can try are Dear Hiring Committee of company name. Um, and that's just a little more specific. Cool. So different sections of the cover letter. Um, you want to start with your introduction paragraph. So this is kind of an introduction to you. So saying, hi. Uh, I'm submitting this cover letter and resume for this position at your company. So making it very clear what you're applying for and who you're applying for that with. And then a little info of how did you find out about that? So did you find it on a website? Um, did someone within the company tell you about it? Did you find out about the internship through this presentation? Like any way that you found out about it. It's just a good way to let them know how they're reaching people. Um, and then finally, this last part, you want to give a little more info on yourself. So what are some good skills that you have that relate to this? Um, do you have any experiences really briefly that relate to it? And then just a little sentence of, of really why are you interested? So I would contribute to the work you're currently doing. I could continue to learn and grow as a professional. Um, that's a little general. I'd probably be more specific, um, but this is just a template. So thinking about why are you interested in them? What can they offer you? So really, why are you wanting to do this in the first place? And then the middle paragraph. So we have the intro. Now we have a middle paragraph and you can split these paragraphs up any way you want, but just a general way to think about the structure. Um, and this middle paragraph, that's where you want to go into a little more depth on experiences. So I mentioned these can be ones from your resume, um, or not mentioned on your resume. Either one is fine, but you want to just mention some relevant experience. Um, if you feel like you don't have relevant experience, that's OK. Talk about what you do have and point out what is relatable about it. So looking in that job description and seeing, oh, they want someone who is good at communication. Well, I had a part time job where I was in customer service. That's a good way to show them, hey, this may not be in the exact same industry, but I do have the relevant skills you're looking for. 
Um, and that's part of, you know, mentioning your qualifications. So explaining here is how I have experienced that relates to the job description, explaining why you would be an asset to them, why you would be good in this role, um, and just being specific. So avoiding general statements of I would be good, <laughs> but saying specifically, oh, in my role at this company, this is what I did. Um, this would support me in this role I am applying for because blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of the structure I'd follow. Um, and generally for this paragraph, you want to mention around like two experiences minimum, um, maybe three if you want to talk about more than that, but definitely at least two. And then the last part of the cover letter, um, and this is usually the easiest part. It's typically only about like two to three sentences, um, but it's a conclusion. So good things to do in this section, um, requesting an opportunity to interview or to meet with them. So saying, I look forward to meeting with you. That's a great way to say that. And um, re-mentioning contact info. So saying, if you'd like to meet with me, you can reach me at this phone number and this email. It's just a good way to remind them how to reach you. And then the last part is just making sure to thank them. So thank you for reviewing my application materials. I look forward to hearing from you. Here is my contact info. Um, you can do these any order that you want. There's not a specific order to them, but just making sure to touch on all of those. Um, and then general things to avoid. So make sure not to end abruptly. So you should have that conclusion. Um, avoiding casual goodbyes. So typically I would avoid saying talk to you later or um, next meeting you with an exclamation point. Um, and kind of tying into that too, any unprofessional attention grabbing statements like let's cut to the chase or let's be real here. Um, I joke, but I have seen these before. Um, it's just kind of like, it's too abrupt and like can put someone off and be like, oh, I don't want to talk to that person. They seem kind of rude. So making sure to do everything on the left of just being very gracious and, and telling them like, I really do want to meet with you. Um, please reach out to me. And then the last thing I will mention too um, is references. So for now, um, if you've had work experience, um, either part-time or full-time, um, a good thing to use is a boss, a supervisor. Um, you can use a coworker if you need to. Um, but in addition to that, if, if you haven't had that much work experience or you're not wanting to use a boss or a supervisor um, from previous or current places you work at, other good choices are teachers. So ones that you feel like you have a close relationship with, um, coaches or anyone who's in charge of like a team or a club that you're on. Um, and then lastly, guidance counselors at school. So the way I'd go about it is maybe not setting up a meeting, perhaps setting up a meeting with a guidance counselor, but for these other ones saying at the end of class or at the end of your work shift or scheduled meeting, um, pull them aside and say, hey, can I talk to you for a few minutes and say, I'm applying for this job or this internship. Um, would you be willing to be a reference for me? Um, so it doesn't have to be a complicated conversation. Um, you can really just ask that. And then the only thing I'd say to keep in mind is if they say yes and they go forth and they be a reference for you, um, make sure to thank them. So sending them an email or giving them like a handwritten note or just verbally saying thank you so much for being a reference um, and keeping them up to date too. So if you do get hired or you get an interview, let them know because references really, really appreciate knowing that, you know, they're being a reference helped you. Um, and then I would just mention some not good choices for references are like a parent, your best friend, um, a family friend or an acquaintance or stranger. So these are maybe not so good options just because they're not professional or like they're people who maybe don't know you that well. Perfect. And then the last thing I just want to mention, um, once you feel like you're, you're good with your application materials, just make sure to do a last look through for any grammar issues. Um, you can use tools online like Grammarly for free to do that. Um, check out for abbreviations and acronyms. Just make sure you're spelling out anything that might be confusing to someone who isn't familiar with it. Um, and again, looking at those key phrases and words from the job description. So, oh, they want me to be good at communication. Let me make sure to mention that somewhere. 
Um, and then lastly, I think it's good to have someone else review. So asking a teacher or a friend um, or a parent or someone in your life that you trust to look through that and make sure that it looks good to them. Thank you.